guys, it's Flot from Couple of Dabblers. Today I am making the video that a lot of people have been waiting for for the past maybe six months, ever since I made the first Lowry Stand Stitching Corner video. Um, just to, I guess, give a brief overview again of my Stitching Corner right now, it still has this ottoman and I normally put this um, project bag on there where I contain all the threads that goes with the project I'm working on and then you've got my Lowry stand in full view it has a light rack here and then the accessory rack and then you've got my needle minders here as well um, so the Lowry stand clamps onto the adapter which also has the um, light clamped on and then the Q-snap sits inside the adapter. So then you've got my red chair that I really like. then this little table that I purchased um, a few months ago so that's pretty much what this little corner contains um, so we'll then talk about I guess the difference between the stitching corner right now and the stitching corner six months ago so as you can see, I have added this light rack. This was literally purchased so the accessory rack can work. I bought this one first and realized from different comments that I had to purchase the light rack. So then I purchased the light rack. But as you can see, my light does not need the light rack to you know get fixed anywhere it actually really stabilizes itself onto the adapter so then I decided to put scissors in this hole I guess it can also sit here doesn't really matter um, and I've got all these um, I guess free uh, needle needle minders here um, the way I use them is literally only um, when I do stitch with me um, I pre-threaded some needles and then just put the needles here and sort of keep in mind okay this is the color next this is the color next um, I purchased I think just these two myself all the other ones were gifts with purchases um yeah i when i first got into the hobby i did purchase quite a bit for a little while so then you've got this accessory rack i've got a few needles on this needle organizer thing and then you've got the thread organizer Personally, I don't use this one. I think it has its role maybe in some um, stitching practices. Like if you're working with a project that has very little colors, then um, just by sorting your threads here, you know exactly what you're working with and you can just pick out the colors that way. But if your project has a lot of different colors, some colors can be very similar to each other there's no way you can remember okay this is this yellow and this is the other yellow um it might work if you like cross country where you just work with one color or maybe you know a couple colors at one time and you just want to get organized before you start stitching so you save time then you just put maybe i don't know several strands of one color here several strands of the other color here 
that's one of the ways I can think of that you might find this useful. To me, it's not really useful. Um, another thing to keep note is that the plastic does not want to go straight. When you get them, this, like these two are separate from this rack. So you literally have to um, slot them in very difficultly. And I was very scared of uh, breaking this. So it was, it was a struggle to put them in. And then we've got this table. This table was a um, surprising buy, I guess. I, uh, I've noticed with my previous setup, I was in need of a table um, to put, you know, some snacks or a drink on. Just uh, as a temporary fix, I just used like a chest um, standing up so I could put a glass of water on. But I was always worried that, you know, things could topple over. Um, so then one day JP and I were doing our, you know, regular weekly grocery shopping in Aldi. And then we found this little, little table. It looks really good and it's slim enough to fit this area. And it goes really, really well with the red chair. Originally, I was thinking about, you know, a plastic trolley. But I'm glad I didn't go with that because it wouldn't have looked very nice around the this corner. Um, I remember in my first video I was complaining about this cable dangling on the floor and um, it might trip our Greyhound Amy. In fact, she was really good crossing around here. Um, originally because I was worried I always sort of disconnected and tucked it away um, when I wasn't using the light but one time or a couple times I forgot and Amy would always be very mindful when um, she was walking around here whereas me a human I tripped on it at least twice so now I just leave it on like this and um, you know everything was fine <laughs> So next thing I think I'll show you what it will look like when I do work on my piece and explain to you how I stitch. Um, I maybe give you some uh, advice on how you stitch to prevent you from getting, you know, sore back or sore shoulders because um, I, I have experimented with it a little bit. Okay, so this would be the view I get when I work on my project. Um, I've got the light here. So before we, uh, I guess, dig into how I stitch, I want to talk a little bit about this light. It is pretty bright in terms of providing illumination, but the problem is, as you can see, it has this exposed ring of light here, which means the light it provides is not very concentrated on the area you want to illuminate. Um, it's okay when you're stitching with daylight at the same time because um, with the daylight in the background, this light doesn't seem super bright in comparison. But when it's at night, this, this area, especially when you you know, you, you, I guess you, um, bend down a little bit, look down on your project and this light just keeps going into your eyes and it, after a little while, it just makes your eyes quite sore. So if you're thinking about buying a light, personally, I will not recommend this one. I will recommend something with a bit of a shade or, um, with very, I guess, accurate direction of um, illumination instead of lights going in all direction and it has this possibility of going into your eyes and uh, stimulating your eyes at the same time. So that's the light. With working on the project, so right now I have my iPad 
on my right here. This setup works really well when I'm working on, you know, the left corner. But when I'm slowly approaching here in the middle section or almost approaching the middle, suddenly the position of the iPad is in the way. So a couple times I have um, had to move the iPad away so I can work, you know, close to where the iPad was or like underneath the iPad. So in that case, I definitely need an iPad holder and I will get one once I've got enough funds. So that's probably the first thing I'll get when uh, I have my hobby budget back. Um, it will be very nice if it can, you know, sit here. Then that setup would be pretty good. And it doesn't obstruct anything. And um, originally, well, I have the needle miner there because I had the needles um, there. So once I started using this area as my iPad location, uh, getting access to the needle underneath the iPad became, you know, a bit of a nuisance. So I started putting my needles on there. Um, so I actually left it empty for quite a while until I noticed this problem. So then I started using that and it's working okay. It's working all right. Oh, also, after I made my first video, a lot of people commented on this setup with the adapter and um, my Q-Snap. So a lot of people told me, oh, Q-Snap's quite light. Um, you don't really need the frame adapter, but I really like it this way because it makes the whole frame a lot more stable. Um, just to experiment, I did get rid of the adapter and just clamped the Lowry stand. No, clamped the Q-Snap onto the Lowry stand. It was so wobbly. Um, another good thing about this one is because it's so stable, when I stitch, well, particularly this area, um, I could rest my right arm on here. So that takes the strain away from having to lift my arm. Um, so I guess that's one way to reduce um, shoulder pain or possible shoulder pain. Um, when I first got the setup, uh, I thought, okay, I should uh, keep my project really close to me. So I um, actually got the stand, you know, to move up quite high a lot higher maybe like a couple more holes higher but then i realized um i had to lift my arm and there was no way for my arm to rest on anything so my like both my shoulders were i guess having to work higher than they're comfortable with so that's what made my shoulders and back so sore then i lowered the stand quite a bit pretty much as low as it can go just a little bit above my armrest and it works a lot better so I do recommend maybe trying out um, the height of your Lowry stand if your setup right now doesn't work also um, like I well complained when I was working here, um, you know, things would get in the way. Also, suddenly my right arm doesn't have that much space to spread out or to get relaxed. So I have found that my right shoulder tends to get a bit tense just because um, to work here and work with the little space my arm has here um i had to just i don't know um subconsciously lift lift up my right shoulder a little bit and that that's what causes the discomfort and pain in the right shoulder so i have decided when i do have the fun to do so i will get 
an L bar, um, which will help with the situation here. So I have more flexibility in terms of controlling where the place I want to work with sits in the, in the whole corner. What I meant was, let's say I'm working this area and it's quite comfortable. If I have an L bar, I can move the whole thing towards the left. So this area can sit here. Then that, that means I'm always comfortable and I have so much space to make sure that I can spread out. Hopefully I'm making sense. So right now in my plan, I am definitely getting an iPad holder and an L bar. And in terms of this is up to you. Personally, I don't see the, the vital roles in having these things. I mean, it's nice to have. It gives you more things to play with. Um, and if you do tend to use a lot of uh, accessories like bees or whatever, you can also buy those um, holders. Yeah. And if you have a different kind of light, you can, you know, stabilize your light there. It can go up here. It's, it's fine. And apparently this can hold a spool of threads, which I don't think is useful in this day and age. That's the end of the video. Uh, I think I've pretty much told you what I wanted to mention. Um, I've told you the differences between the setup right now and back then when I made my first video. I've also told you what I wanted to get to make sure the stitching corner can work better in the future. Um, if you have any other questions or concerns, make sure to leave a comment down below and I will be more than happy to answer those questions for you. I want to help you in determining, you know, how to set up your corner or whether to buy a Lowry stand or not. Hope the video was helpful for you um, and I hope you can have a perfect stitching corner so you can get cozy and enjoy what you stitch um, or just have a hobby room for whatever you enjoy. So I will see you in the next video. Bye! Um. Oh, hello. Hey, Amy. You bit hot. Oh. Oh. Oh, good girl. I love you too. Oh, good girl. Anyways. <laughs>